Good afternoon, everybody. It's Sunday afternoon, just after 1 p.m. in uh, beautiful downtown, <laughs> north of Wilson, Virginia. We are the downtown. It, it's a, about a block long and there's maybe four buildings. So that, that's us in downtown Mouth of Wilson. I wanted to take some time to pop in today and say hello and to let you know that we are gathering the information from groups to draw with the random number generator groups to book the available dates on Quiltville Inn. Hi, everybody. I see you popping up. This is wonderful. So many are here. That's great. I didn't want to interrupt your sewing time, so we won't take up too much of your time today. Um, I came in to get the binding on a couple of cushions, and I thought, well, shoot, that might make a good kind of a, a video thing for those who have asked me questions on what I'm doing before. Um, but before I get too far ahead of myself, if you have a group of 12 that would like to book the retreat house, for a retreat, you'll find all of that information in yesterday's blog post, or you can click the Quiltville Inn Rally tab at the top of the blog at quiltville.blogspot.com. And did you know you can also find my blog by going just to my quiltville.com website? There's a um, tab that you can push if you're on a mobile device. There's a button. You just push the button that says blog. Or if you're on a computer, at the top of the page, you'll see several different tabs. One is for home. That would be the main website. One is for blog. One is for the Quiltville store. And tab number four is for Quiltville Inn. So it's very easy to find. Everything is all in one place. I started doing these back in October when I got back from Kenya. It's been a really fun project. Um, I did post photos of the cutter quilt that these were coming from. It was a lovely applique quilt. You can see these, these tulip blocks here. We're guessing made sometime around the 30s, maybe early 40s. The, they were all hand appliqued, hand quilted, but some of the fabrics, especially the ones out here that was a, it was a um, sashing with a nine patch cornerstone, at some point just started to shred from use. So there were several good blocks left. Um, if I could just grab my handy dandy biggest ruler, I might be able to salvage some. And I thought, oh, how fun to have um, some tulip quilts on some of the beds at the inn. And that led to another <laughs> cutter quilt go opening up possibilities. I've now made a table runner and I've got leftover blocks from that too. But I wanted to show you how I do my pillows, I've been doing these for years this way, where I bind it just like a regular quilt and it gives you a flange appearance and a little pop of color at the edge. I just feel like it's it, it outlines much nicer. I know you can just make a cushion by sewing around two squares, turning it right side out and having all the seams to the inside. But I love this little touch. So they, they're bound just like a regular quilt. Now, one of the things, I'm going to grab this other one, that I've learned while doing these is that if I'm, if I'm going to do um, the envelope backing, you know, the peekaboo backing, you have to leave enough overlap that once you get a nice, fat, plump pillow form in there, that you're not going to have that gaposis happening, you know, but we don't want the, the, the inside hanging out. So my magic formula for myself is if I take the dimensions of the outside of the, the pillow, and this one was cut from, I tried to be organized, but can you tell I'm really not all that organized? Okay. I was able from this top, is this the one with the, yeah, this one's cut, okay. So this one, this piece, you can tell, I even trimmed it lopsided. So the sashings are bigger on one side than on the other. I thought they'd have a very country primitive look that way and be really cute. If it's gotta be wonky, you may as well emphasize the wonky. So this one I trimmed at 14 and a half inches. Oops, did you just see Lola <laughs> go past? Yeah, they're, they're, they're around here, they'll be, they'll be coming and going. So I cut this at 14 and a half inches. Now if you don't have a really, really big ruler, you may wanna be on the lookout for one when you can find a half price coupon at Joann's or whatever. My friend Lisa brought me this one. It's 20 and a half inches. And I really didn't think that I would use 
or need 20 and a half inches, but I have used it um, for so many things. My favorite thing to use this 20 and a half inches for is to square the corners of a quilt before putting binding on because it's really important that your binding corners be square. So I'll square the corners and then use a long 22 inch straight edge to connect the dots between the two corners. So my sides are also straight. So I love this, but it also enabled me to cut um, bigger ones. Let's see, I've got one ready to put binding on so we can get to that later. But this one I was able to cut a 16 and a half inch square from. It had enough at the edge that, that I could do that um, the other ones that are smaller, I had to cut away some of the rotted part of the fabric. So this one's 16 and a half. Now, this one already has a backing on it. And what I do is um, figure out if this is 16 and a half, okay, that finishes at, at 16, right? Because we did a quarter inch seam all the way around, and I do a quarter inch binding. Half of 16 is eight. Now add three inches to that. I want a three inch overlap in the middle so that my insides are not hanging out. So if I just keep three inches, divide in half and add three, then I'm pretty good with knowing that by the time I get my pillow form in there, I'll be nice and plump and full, but I won't, I won't have my insides hanging out. Nobody likes that gaposis, right? We don't. Okay, so what did I do here was, I was so organized before I started. Really, I was. Okay, so I have these two. These two are the 14 and a half inch ones because I, I had to cut away some rotten fabric at the edge. So my backing pieces I cut 14 and a half, which finishes at 14. So half of 14 is seven plus three inches, 10 inches. So these pieces are 14 and a half by 10. And what you're gonna do is on your longest sides, fold over about a quarter of an inch or a little bit less, you're gonna do a, a small double fold hem. So fold it over once, fold it over again. And I just put that under my presser foot and I just work it down, stitching as close to the edge of that fold as I can. So you've got a double fold hem on these two rectangles. Now, because I'm so organized, okay? Oh, it's the ones with the hems. The ones with the hems are pinned right here. Oh, hi, Lola. Oh, okay. She's busy. She's into everything. It's been quite the adventure. Um, we'll show you how this goes. And then what I'm going to do is, if, if you have pictures you want me to share back with everybody in this video, because this video does end up on YouTube, and it does end up embedded in my blog post tomorrow, but if you post photos in the comment section on Facebook, nobody gets to see those and i can't see those comments from where i'm sitting right here either um, i'm quite a distance from the camera from the keyboard so that you can see what i'm doing at the machine so you can email me your photos at quiltcamtime at gmail.com okay don't send them to my regular email address they won't get to me they actually go to a, a holding bin off um off my main my main inbox so i won't be able to share those all right, so this is our 14 and a half inches. I'm gonna place it right down here on the table. And I'm going to put the hemmed part towards the center. This is the bottom one. I want this on the bottom first, okay? And I am going to just put a few pins. I like my overlap, the top one overlapped over the bottom. So when I look at the back of the pillow, the bottom you know, overlap is not what you see. Okay, so I'm going to just pin in a few places here just to get this one in place. And I do all of my sewing with a walking foot when I'm doing this. I'll get you another one here. I just find that it works better to keep things from shifting. Okay, I'm gonna put this one here. So this is our first one. This is the bottom of the cushion back, okay? Now you can quilt this if you want. If you want a quilted back with your quilted front, you can certainly do that. But I didn't feel the need to for these um, cushion covers. And the big vintage evil looking florals are perfect for the back side of this. And they were a, a gift of fabric from my friend Nancy. 
Okay, so this is the, now the top one, and I'm going to just lay that over the one that's already pinned on. On the side here, I'm going to take the two, pin, the two pins where I pinned the top edge of that hem. I'm going to just pull that out and now pin through all layers. Okay, Watch your um, sewing machine surface. If you have a, a nice wood top, you might not want to be digging with your pins. I like a beat-up sewing machine table so that I don't have to worry about it, right? Okay, okay. so I'm going to take this one out here. Okay, so now that's laying nice and flat. I'm going to put in another pin at this place and another pin at this place. And then all that's left for me is the bottom corners and a couple around the bottom. So I am pinning around the entire circumference of the cushion. Okay. I, mean, I think this would work for so many things. Maybe all you can get out of that cutter quilt is some small six inch squares. You could bind those the same way. A little bit of binding, turn them into mug rugs. There's got to be something to do to keep these vintage quilts from simply becoming teddy bears. Not that I don't like the teddy bears, but uh, I, I love when we can actually use pieces in other ways too. Okay, so I've got this pinned all the way around and notice that it is wrong sides together here is the front of the pillow cushion this is the back the right sides out and my pocket this is the this is pointing towards the top over here okay so the top goes over the bottom i'm going to check to see who's with us today hopefully you are getting some stitching time in Looks like I've got a message from Caitlin, and she says, hello from Butte, Montana. So Butte, Montana is joining us. How's your snow going? We had just a little skiff last night. Um, not much. Um, Emmy Lou didn't want to go outside this morning when we opened up the patio door for her. She went out. She came back in. Um, it's now about 40 degrees outside. It's sunny, but it's windy, and that wind is really cold, but the snow's all gone which is fine for me she says I just finished the binding on my Seahawks version of expanding stars by Emily Dennis of Quilty Love now pressing and trimming all my pieces of on Ringo Lake to put that top together this month it's my last work in project needed to be completed before I can start on frolic so it sounds like she keeps to a pretty good schedule of finishing things before she allows herself to dive into something new. I also love to give myself incentives. Do you do that too? Do you have a rule for yourself that you must work on something a certain amount before you can pull something new into the queue? If you do, leave that in the comment section. I'd love to come back later and see um, how you handle your multitude of, of works in progress. I don't like to say UFO, and it's really not a UFO if it hasn't been, I mean, if it's been touched in the last year, it's a work in progress. If it's been more than a year since you touched it, oh, honey, that's a UFO. She says, thanks for all you do. Love your work. Well, thank you, Caitlin. I'm so glad you could join in with us today. JP says, happiness is clue six and quill cam. Awesome. So happy to catch you live from California. So good morning, California. I think, yeah, you're three hours behind me. So it's only 1030 there. Um, working on clue six on a Foff sewing machine I picked up for 25 bucks. That sounds awesome. Um, love vintage sewing machines. So she sent a picture. Oh my gosh, that is a lovely Foff. In fact, I think that's the, like the one that my mom had when I was first learning to sew garments. So <laughs> she's, she's got us up there on the big screen, but $25 for that all metal Foff. She really, really got a steal of a deal. And there she's working on her part six. Those flying geese are looking good. Okay. On the mystery, some of the questions that I've had uh, were things like, I think I only got, I only got one kind of um, nasty gram that said, you need to take into consideration that other people may want to use different methods to make these units, and you didn't give us a chance to cut them our way. I couldn't because we were cutting for pieces down the line and to give instructions for several different methods of units. And I've given three methods for half square triangles, three different methods for flying geese already. To give more methods um, to accomplish the same thing, not only is it crazy making for me, but it confuses everybody else. Sometimes the, the less you give, 
um, people can decide what to do easier. I think three, three methods is enough for, for any clue. So, um, and what I've also heard is from a lot of people who said, wow, I, I guess I have to try it your way. I really don't want to try it your way. I'm not comfortable with the easy angle tool by the end of the clue is this was so cool. Why didn't I try it this way sooner? So um, in future mysteries, it'll come with a disclaimer that anybody who participates agrees to go with the flow. And at any time, if you're uncomfortable with a unit, you can take a time out until you see um, if there's a different method you can come up with after the reveal. So we're getting very close now. That's all I'm going to say. We're going to be very close to that re reveal very soon. If you were uncomfortable doing the flying geese with the methods that I um, gave you, essential triangle tool cutting, traditional rotary cutting, and paper piecing, if, you, if you're not comfortable with any of those, I would wait until after the reveal and say, oh, okay, that's what that is. That's where that goes. I'm going to do this. There's, there's no shame in um, stepping aside for a little bit and just waiting and then jumping back in. Really, it's not a penalty at all, but what is unreasonable is to expect that I would give all methods for all people um, at all times. So that's what's going on there. I hope that you're working well on your part seven and you did see that part six went live on um, New Year's Eve morning. So if you missed six, backtrack. You'll find all of the clues one through seven plus the introduction under the Frolic Mystery tab at the top of my blog. Remember to print your clues as we go because that tab will disappear Valentine's Day. I've given you a little bit extra. Usually it disappears the first of February, but because we're going a little bit longer, I wanted to give a little bit longer for people to be able to print those last clues, okay? Let me check in here and see what we're doing. I wonder if I can pop up Facebook on my phone and then actually see, let's go to posts here and let's see if I can get to the comments and actually read them from here, that would be fun. Wow, it says we're live, but I'm afraid if I click this, it's gonna put this, yep, it's going to put the sound on. How do I turn it off? We're just gonna put the media volume down. So we have Melissa Kim Johnson. Hello, she says, I'm almost finished with Clue 6 of Frolic and enjoying my first quilt. I've got four that are finished and need binding. Binding is my absolute favorite thing to do in the evening. It's like I can't wait to get through my day so I can throw myself into binding mode. So, yeah, get that binding on so you can stitch it. She says, doing a sew along with a local quilt shop on the 14th, then taking my first paper piecing class later this month. Sounds like you're busy. That's awesome. Uh, uh, this looks so great. Everybody's so busy. This is wonderful. Sue Smith says, bottom line, you can't please everyone. And the majority is sure pleased with um, your instructions. Love from Canada. So that's that's just awesome. Um, okay, what do I have? Do you guys see what, <laughs> see what Lola's doing at the top of the pole? Yeah, she's pole dancing up there. Lola, what are you doing? She loves the cat tree, so that's always um, entertainment around here. So I'm going to take this pillow, this pillow, this cushion cover, pillow cover, and I am going to just sew a little bit less than a full quarter inch all the way around the outside edge. And I tend to take pins out as I reach them. So let's do this. I've got my walking foot already on. I'm going to take this first pin out because it's in a corner. And when I start, I take a few stitches and then I immediately cut the thread tails if there's not a leader ender on there. Because the last thing I want is all of that stuff, stuff, stuff. Okay. So a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. You can pull the pins and adjust as you go. The walking foot really does help with all of these layers because I've got a um, quilt top batting, backing, and the cushion backing. So I've got plenty of layers going on here. And I'll lift that up so it doesn't catch. And stop in the corner with the needle down and pivot. Yeah, so my seam is more than an eighth, but less than a quarter. I 
just get close to the pin and then pull it. So if I'm lucky, I'll have two of these for binding tonight. Okay. This here. I'm finding little projects like this very, very satisfying. I can stitch the binding in an evening and then take it right over to the end and stick it on a bed. Okay. It's creeping just a hair. Come on. I can hear her jumping off. Yep, there she goes. And she's chattery too. What are you doing? What are you doing, huh? Come here. You want to say hi to everybody? No, she doesn't. She's kind of standoffish unless she wants to be touched. All right, so that's side number three. Okay. And back. What? What? No. Did you want up? You want up? You want to say hi? Yeah. You say hi to everybody. She has the softest fur of any cat I have ever felt. But she's definitely independent and she does not want to settle down on the lap. So there you go. Okay, now. And then off we go. And if I didn't have my walking foot on, I would go ahead and run a leader ender piece under there. Have you been following along with our leader ender shoe fly blocks? This is a stack that I've recently constructed while working on another project. The whole stack just grows on the side of whatever you're working on. So if you'd like to jump in on that, we're only halfway through. You can jump in on at any point. Um, you'll look at the free patterns tab on my blog for the cutting directions. There is no specific project for these. You're supposed to just make blocks, see how many you can do, and decide whether you want to make a table runner, a wall hanging, um, a baby quilt, a, a bed runner, whatever you want to do, a full-size quilt. We're just making blocks to sew up the scraps. So go to the free patterns tab on the blog, scroll down to S, for shoe fly shoe and that's where you'll find these I've given you block directions in two sizes this is the four inch size and there's also a six inch size dependent upon the size of your scraps okay all right so I'm gonna just remove this which feels weird with no leader ender but with walking foot that's what we're doing all right so this is now completely sewn on all my pins are removed and it's time for binding yay only I didn't make binding for this one I made binding <laughs> for the red one. I thought I really wanted to accent that red. There were only a few blocks with red in this cutter quilt. So I'm putting a red binding on this one, and I may put a green binding on the other one just to kind of differentiate them. I don't know how wide you like to cut your binding, but my absolute favorite is a two-inch strip, and I join it end to end with a diagonal seam. I cut three strips for this just because um, I knew it was going to take a little bit more than, than um, two strips, maybe, dependent on how the corners fold. And you lose fabric when you join strips end to end on the diagonal. If you click the binding tutorial under the tips and techniques tab on the blog, you'll see how I um, overlap my strip ends and just sew across the diagonal um, with a diagonal seam rather than cutting miters and then trying to sew a bias, okay? I take the strips, the binding, once that's, that's done and the excess is trimmed away, and I do press it in half because I find if I don't press it and have a nice crease, what happens is I start to sew is that the edges will start to shift from each other and then I've got a twist at the, the fold of my binding and I don't like that. Um, do I measure around my items to find if a seam is going to lay in a corner? When it's a small project like this, I can. I can, but you know, it's it's always a crapshoot. So if I put this beyond the corner, 
And I kind of give myself a little bit of extra in the corners to fold. That can go about there. But then if I come back around, will I miss another corner? So I may shift this maybe to about there. And let's see what we're going to do. Now, when I do my binding, first thing I'm going to do is cut off this selvage. I want a nice straight edge here. And I'm going to open up the binding. And I am going to take this one corner. I'm looking at you right-handed. So this is my right-hand corner. And I am going to fold it on the diagonal until it reaches the side of the strip. And I'm going to give that diagonal a little bit of a, a finger press. So it looks just like this. Okay. This is my no measure, don't need a ruler, don't need a rotary cutter binding application. Then where this, this bottom fold is right here, this, this edge of the, the fabric, I'm going to take a pin and I am going to just put that pin in and out and in and out. So that's marking, this pin is marking where this edge of this triangle is. So I can fold this triangle back up and this pin is still marking this right here. Now you can do that with a pencil. You can fold this over and you can put a ruler down and you can mark it a line across there with a pencil. But if I just leave my pin there, the pin is doing the same thing, right? Okay. Now before I do this, should I check to see who else is looking in on us today? I'm going to go back to the email, see if anybody has any pictures to share. Jody, yes, she does. She says, Frolic Helper Singer 301. Chewbacca ins <laughs> insisted on being in my lap. So Chewbacca has got to be her cat too. Or is it a dog? I can't see. The picture's not open yet. Um, so I was forced to take a time out from my Singer 301 and from Sewing Frolic Clues. Oh, it is a doggy. I enjoy every minute of both mystery time and doggy snuggles. I thought your cutting of Clue 4 was absolutely genius, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just wait till you see. Just wait. Some are working at guessing. Some are close. But if you have a guess, this is one of those things where you smile and you giggle to yourself and you keep it to yourself because other people are still wanting it to remain a mystery. So we don't want to be out there telling a bunch of six-year-olds that there's no Santa Claus, right? So if you think you know, just keep it to yourself, but, but giggle and grin all the way. She says, you're um, having us make kits for frolic and that is so much fun. And here's a picture. Oh my gosh, I can see why that's a Chewbacca. Look at all that fur. So here's her puppy watching her sew. I love that. The fur critters add so much to my everyday life. I love having them around. Okay. And he, Michelle says, frolic in a baby quilt. I'm working on frolic clue six and leaders and enders hourglass units for a baby quilt for a new grandbaby due in a month. Congratulations. That's awesome. She says, congratulations on the success of Quiltville Inn. Love that you have so many quilters eager to come stay. Hope to visit someday. I hope so. I hope it's a place that, that people want to come back again and again and again and again and again to. Um, you know, with, with only a limited number of weekends in a year and more groups than you know, needed to fill the weekends, the only way to do this is to host a drawing. And so it's, it's really exciting to see. As of this morning, there were more than 100 groups already registered to be in the drawing for um, retreat dates. So what we're going to do is starting Wednesday, and it, it, the drawing is open-ended. So even if we've started on the drawing, you can still add your group. The, the list, after we're full drawing all the dates, becomes the waiting list. So you want to be on the waiting list then enter the drawing, okay? Because we're going to still use those people. They're going to stay in line um, for, for later because we want to give everybody a, a chance. But on Wednesday, I will use the random number generator to draw a number. And then I will match that number to the corresponding number that's on the, the spreadsheet that the form generates. And I will contact that group and say, hey, I've drawn you in my um, quilt fill in retreat rally. These are the available weekends for retreat, which weekend works for your group. And then I'll give them that weekend and draw another group to pick the next date until all the dates are gone. And then we'll keep the waiting list in case a group needs to fall out. We've, we've got groups that can pick in and take over their reservation should they, they be able or need to um, cancel for whatever reason it happens, right? I'm trying to be as fair as, as possible and it's 
really exciting to see. We've had um, entries from as far away as um, Canada and Alaska. So it's awesome. All right, I'm going to start this. And I leave it myself about a six to eight inch tail. And I sew my binding on because this is a two inch strip for a quarter inch finished binding with a quarter inch seam. And I've got that marked here on my machine with my little sticky seam guide. So even with a walking foot, I can do that. And what I find now that I'm sewing through backing fabric, back of quilt fabric, batting, front of quilt fabric, and two layers of binding, that's seven layers of stuff, that I need to make my seam or my stitch length just a bit bigger or it bogs down and stitches too small. And then if you ever have to take anything out, it's impossible. So let me check the stitch length here. That's moving pretty good. One of the reasons I love this machine, this is a 19, I think it's 40s or 50s, 201, is it is gear driven, not belt driven. And it is powerful and quiet. It really sews through many layers. So this one tends to stay with the walking foot on it at all times. I'm going to sew just to a quarter inch of the edge and then backstitch and remove the um, cushion cover to fold that miter. OK, so there's my quarter inch from the edge. And I'm going to do just a couple of stitches back and remove it. Okay. And those of you who've, who've bound will find that I probably bind very much the same as you do, except for when I'm doing the hand stitching part. I tend to work opposite of the way a lot of folks do. So I'm going to lay this on the tabletop. And I'm going to do this so that I can see that you can see. I'm going to fold the excess binding straight up so that I've got a diagonal fold from the corner to towards the inside of the quilt. And it's got to be a nice square fold right in here. And give it a finger press. And then I'm going to fold it right back down with another fold right at the top of the cushion cover. So I'm catching that fold right at the edge. If you want to have not too much stuff in the corner, and you want to be sure that your angle is really the diagonal, you've got to make sure that that fold stays straight at the, the top of your cushion or your binding on your quilt. Because if that starts to angle, guess what? It's going to fold out and, and look a little bit odd also. So make sure that that's straight. And I start right at the edge and sew that corner down. You don't have to start a quarter inch in. It's actually better if you start at the edge and sew in. I know some people like to sew to the quarter inch and then they sew out at an angle, but I've also found that then I can't adjust how that, that fold really lies. So I do better with a, a loose miter than a sewn one, if you know the method that I'm talking about. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way to the next corner. I love having a machine set up just for doing bindings. I actually do my piecing on this other side over here. It's a 301 in a cabinet, but um, I need one. I don't want, I get tired of taking the binding foot on, binding foot off, binding foot on. So this just stays set up. Okay. Somebody's being rowdy. Okay. And out we go. So here is that fold and that miter. So when I go to bind this, the first thing that I will do, I can do that right now because we're sitting here, is I'll fold the seam allowance of the binding down, exposing just the corner of the inside of the quilt or the cushion or whatever. I gotta get those threads off. And then I'm gonna trim just a tiny bit of that corner off. Do you do this too? It actually gives your fabric a place to lie. So I'm not cutting into the stitching, but I have trimmed across this corner. So in effect, it's like um, clipping corners before you turn something right side out. I'm sure enjoying watching her on that <laughs> cat tree, watching traffic. Okay, so I have not clipped any threads of stitching. I have just trimmed 
a tiny little corner of the quilt from um, the seam allowance. And what this will allow me to do is, as I'm binding, I bind with the quilt in my lap like this, okay, right side out. My fingers bind from right to left towards this corner. And I will stitch beyond the next seam allowance and anchor that very well. Fold this corner over, do two stitches here at the corner, and continue on. If I bind this way with the wrong side out, I find it harder because I am unable to pull the thread towards me. I'm actually pull, pulling the binding edge away from me. So to keep the right tension on it is a little bit more difficult. I try this way when I bind and I don't need any clips. I don't use pins. I don't use clips because my left hand is holding just a few inches away from ahead of my game here. As I'm binding, my left hand moves to the next position and is holding just this much down where I need to be sewing. So I don't find that I need to have a hundred binding clips all the way around the edge of a quilt to catch on my thread or to fall out or whatever. And I don't need, I don't need pins. I just fold, hold it with my thumb. I sew to my thumb and then I move my thumb, thumb down about an inch or so. And I sew to my thumb and I sew to my thumb and I never have to have any pins. Okay. So we've still got two sides to put on this, but let's check back for messages and see what's going on. I'm going to flip back and see, can I do that? Am I still here in Facebook? I am. She says, Kathy Croft says, don't know what's more fun to watch, you or the cat. I know, right? So what you can't see from where I'm sitting is there are three baskets on the floor and they will get in one or the other or one will tackle the one, other one that's occupying a basket to get them out. Um, they're, they're, just, they're just too much fun. So Dresden, you haven't really seen Dresden today. Where is he? He's around somewhere. But Dresden is 13 and Lola is 11. So they're not kittens, but they sure act like it, right? It's just a lot of fun. Uh, oh, dismiss. This wants me to start a watch party. I think I'm not going to do that. Tammy Pollard said, I hadn't thought of putting binding on a pillow like that before, before stuffing. Genius. So much less work. Plus, I really love the, the accent that a bound um, cushion has. It just looks a little bit more finished. You know, and some people don't like these pointy ears out here. I think they're kind of fun. But it just looks a little bit more finished, a little bit of pop of color at the edge. So I, I do like it. Um, thank you so much. Let's see what else we got here. Hi from your brother's neighborhood. Your kitty looks happy. Hi, Marilyn. How are you? Um, this one says, hello from Clarendon, Texas. So we've got all kinds. Love your shirt for my daughter. I know. We got this um, at Rural King. That's where we got the ironing stations that we made for the sewing quarters at Quiltville Inn. We've got two big um, ironing stations with big boards on them. They came from Rural King and there were a couple of shirts that Dave said, oh, this is you and oh, this is you. So we had to get two shirts. This one says permanently exhausted and the other one, um, it's a lighter blue and it says in pink, it says, yeah, no. <laughs> so he'll come up with an idea and he'll say, what about if we do this? You should really do this. And the answer is always, yeah, no. <laughs> so, so that's fun. Rural King is awesome. Um, just finished painting the sewing in bedroom and taking a break, says Gail Miller. So that's awesome. And we have a hello from Ireland. So we've got Ireland tuning in today. So that is wonderful. I'm so glad to have you here with us, Bernadette. I'm going to switch over to um, Gmail. And here's um, from a telephone number that has no name attached to it. And the text is separate. So here's the deal. If you are using your text app to send an email, it's a nightmare for the person opening it. So if you're on your phone sending me pictures and messages, open your email app. Don't send an email from the text messenger app, okay? Just, just a heads up on that, because I can't, I can't read this, it won't open. Okay, Kelly Venter says, Quilt Cam, still working on tulip blocks and leaders and enders, yay. 
I haven't touched my tulip block since the last time we tried quilt count. It's just been nuts. Maybe now that we're through the holidays, it'll get a little bit better. Maybe I'll work on them this week. My girlfriend Mona is coming tomorrow to stay two days. She'll be spending the night. And then my friend Jill is coming um, from Pennsylvania and we'll get quilty time together. And my, my nephew is also coming from Texas. So I, it's going to be busy around here this next week. And Kelly says, hope to start my mystery soon. I have to finish my grandbaby's quilts first. Keep up the great work you do for us. We love it. So here's, I'm going to biggie this so that you can see. Here are her tulip blocks. This is Blossom Time, one of my addicted to scraps column blocks. Um, I think it was last year. And yeah, I need to make more of those too. There's just, too, there's just too much to do. Let's finish this binding, shall we? I've got two more corners. And I wanted to show you especially... Um, and I know that it's it's not going to be really clear from this distance from the camera, and I don't have an overhead camera um, set up to be able to show you really close, but I hope that you'll get the idea. Okay, remember, it's all about those two pins, or I mean that one pin that we've got down on this end. That's the whole key. Okay, so I'm going to fold myself another miter here, fold the strip straight up. You want the raw edge of your binding. I'm trying to put this where you can see it. Maybe if I angle down. Would you mind not looking at my head for a while? Okay. So I folded this up. Started here. It was just like this. And you're going to put your finger to hold that fold down and fold it straight up. And this raw edge of your binding should be straight with the edge of whatever you are adding your binding to, whether it's a pillow, a placemat, or whatever. I'm trying to move my hand. There we go. So I'm I'm straight right here. I'm going to hold this miter right in position and bring this end back down. And I want the fold of the binding to be even with the edge of my pillow cover here. Remember that this, even if it's a quilt, this ha this fold has to stay straight. If this fold starts to angle. You're not going to get a good miter when you go to turn your um, fabric over the seam allowance, okay? So this fold needs to stay here. Now you can pin it, but I just kind of keep my finger on it and don't let it move and get it right in my machine. And I start my stitching right at the fold. And now we're going to go down to the opposite corner. I'm sewing a quarter inch seam for a quarter inch binding finish from a two inch strip. That saves me 20% on fabric versus a two and a half inch strip. I started doing this when I had a pieced border at the edge of the quilt and I did not want to chop off the points at the edge of the border. And I was binding with um, fabric that didn't have quite enough to cut enough pieces with a two and a half inch strip either. So it's a win-win and I've been doing a quarter inch um, binding finish since that time. I tend to use my hands on the side of my binding to help what I'm binding stay up against my seam guide. It also keeps the seam allowance nice and even so that things don't start to veer this way. If I help with my fingers, oh, and look what we've got right there. There's that, that miter where I joined the strips and it's hitting right here. So that's a win. I'm going to go quarter inch to the edge. Okay, and I'm going to back stitch a bit and remove it from the machine. Okay. We've got two more corners to go, but here's this one again. So if you missed that last time, this might be easier now that I've moved the camera down to where you can see is I will separate the binding from the corner of the cushion or the quilt or the mug rug or whatever. Can you see that's just that's just quilt right there. This the binding is out of the way. And I am going to just nip the corner off. It just went flying. Let's see if I can get it. Just that much. So there the <laughs> which way is the camera going? Okay. So I just just, just, you can see it here. Just nip that corner. It's going to give room for all of those different binding folds 
to have a place to lie. So um, that's how I get a nice corner on my binding that lays nice and flat. Here's, let's see, which is, I'll find you the good one. Uh, 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 this one, see, it's, I removed the fabric, extra fabric from inside this corner because I've got all of these overlaps and folds that also add bulk to the corner. So that way I get a really nice binding corner. Just try it. You're not cutting any stitches. You're just, just nipping some fullness out. Okay, so here's this one again. I'm going to fold it up to be even with the side of the pillow cushion cover. And my fold here is going to has to stay straight with the edge okay and we're going to start right at the fold oh lola don't get in the windowsill i've got cute things in the windowsill they're going to all come tumbling down because she wants to get up there so bad yeah you have a cat tree go pay attention to it All right, stopping quarter inch from the edge. Back stitching a bit. Okay. Okay, so here we are. We've got one left. <clears throat> and I've got way plenty of fabric. And I've rolled over the end of my binding and now it's wrapped around the wheel of my chair. Okay. Yeah, it's always uh, a bit of an adventure. Okay, so last one. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to fold up, fold back, and I'm only going to sew down about two inches and stop. And then we need to deal with these ends. Okay, so I'm going to fold this up. This is the same. By the time you've done this four times, you'll be a pro. We have a lot of newbies, and so I'm really glad for the opportunity to, even if it's basic and you've done this a bazillion times, maybe there's something that you've never thought of. Okay, so I'm gonna go just about two inches, and now I'm gonna stop. And what I wanna do is fold this end back up, and I'm gonna take the top layer, and I am going to trim 1 16th of an inch, approximately, above where that pin is on the bottom strip. So this strip is going to be a little bit shy of reaching this pin. Why? Because you need a tight miter when you're putting on a binding because binding stretches as you sew on it, even if it's straight grain of fabric. How many of you have put on a binding and at that last inch, oops, you get a pleat. If you cut your binding when you're ready to join these ends, just a tiny bit sh short. The fabric will give enough, but you won't end up with the pleat where you come from one line of stitching and where the stitching ends to the stitching where it started, okay? So I'm gonna trim just a hair short of that, and I'm gonna go straight across my strip, okay? I am just, gosh, just about that much, well, I mean, I don't know how to measure this for you. It's just really, it's about my pins right here, the strip is a 16th of an inch shorter, okay? I'm gonna remove this, and this is the, the part that it's kind of tricky. If you've done those burrito pillow cases, it, you know what it's like dealing with all of this stuff. So bottom strip, open it up. And if you feel like you need and a little bit of extra tail, I can pull this back just a little bit, give me a couple inches. Okay, bottom strip stays on the bottom. Top strip, I need to fold this out of my way to give me a little bit of leeway. Right sides together with the first. And I'm going to put them corner to corner. So one is overlapping the other at an angle. Can you see that? And what I am going to do is sew a diagonal seam here and trim the excess away. But to do that, I need to know exactly where that diagonal starts on the bottom one. So I am going to leave myself just a few threads so I can see this little V where to place my needle. I can hold it up, I think, after I get a pin in it. But it's, the, it's this folded pillowcase or pillow cushion that is, is uh, 
kind of hog tying me here. So I'm going to put a pin here on the edge. And I tend to, when I really want to hold something, take that pin and don't just go in and out once. Use it like, like you're stitching something. So you're going to go down and up and down and up. And it'll have two pin stitches to hold things where you want to do stay. So I'm going to take the one pin from the bottom strip and do the same thing here, in and out and in and out. Now let's see if I can hold this up to you. Okay. It's awkward because it's a small item and I've got short tails here. But there's a little V right here at the top. I don't know if you can see that. I can see the bottom strip here and the top strip. And I want to sew from this V down to the bottom corner on the diagonal. And I find that you can crease it if you want to. You can draw a line if you want to. It's, it's a two inch strip and I tend to just eyeball it. And if it's, if it's really bad, I sew it again, but, but chances are I'm gonna be good here. So I can see where that needle needs to start. Put my presser foot down. Sometimes a walking foot wants to misbehave and I'll do this on the regular sewing machine. I'll just run around the corner and do it on the regular sewing machine. I don't wanna switch feet. But most of the time, this one, because of how it feeds fabric, does a pretty good job. And I'm going to just sew from that upper corner. Watch it not want to be, do a good job now. There it goes. And I am just aiming for that bottom corner right there. Just that simple. Okay. Where's my thread tail? My thread fairly matches, so I don't know if you can see, but I have sewn from this corner down to this bottom one, just like that. And if you want to test if your binding works, I'm going to move this just a hair, okay? If you want to test if your binding is going to be tight enough, just let it fold back before I've trimmed. I want to test it to make sure that, yeah, that's tight enough. The backing isn't too loose. The binding isn't going to gape. I'm not going to get a pleat. Once I'm sure, I can open that strip back up. And I do a lot just with my scissors. It would take more work to lay this down on a, on a cutting mat and try to grab a ruler and a rotary cutter. I'm just trimming, leaving an approximate quarter inch seam allowance. So here's my, my seam allowance right there. I'm going to just carefully take my thumbs and open up that seam and give it a good finger press. This could go to the iron, but I feel like I don't need to at this point. My fingers are good. Now, once you've got that seam nice and pressed open, test it again. We're going to have a nice um, straight binding with no extra fullness and no pleat at that point where, where you end meets where you started. Okay. So the whole key is make that last tail of your binding just a hair short. Okay. So we're going to come back to where we left off. And I'm just going to finish this side. It fits nice and snugly. I'm going to go all the way, maybe an inch past where I started. And I can fold that, that binding over and see oh, there's a loose thread. But I can feel I can feel where that seam is, and I have there's no pleats. So by this point, you have no idea where I started and, and where I ended up. All right, let me flip this back up here. Hi guys. Okay. My hair's a mess today. It's a Sunday. That's the way it goes around here. You know, one of those things that I promised myself now that I'm pushing 60, can I say that? Because I'll be 58 um, in a couple of weeks, is I'm so glad I am beyond the age of having to worry about having hair done and makeup on before I show up on camera. Really, I just wanna keep it as it is. And if I'm clean, that's, that's good enough. Beyond that, you won't find, you know, the, the, the hair, the makeup, the, the whatever. All right, so here's my binding project tonight. What can you do to maybe practice on a binding today? Maybe something small, um, a cushion cover, a mug rug, 
a table runner, find some orphan blocks, see if you can do something, and then, then practice um, this binding. I've got this one now also, because we sewed all the way around it, and see it's gonna be a little bit smaller, but size doesn't matter with a cushion, so I might end up with two bindings to sew on these little cushions, upside down, um, today. So, all right. Let me, oh, you know what, and I totally forgot, and you're going to have to indulge me for just a few minutes, because there's something that is ending today that you are not going to want to miss. If you remember last fall, um, Holly Ann Knight was ha running her fall um, free motion quilting academy, and she had a special deal running. And many of you signed up for that and absolutely loved it. Some of you missed it and said, when's the next one? Well, guess what? The next one starts, I think it's February 17th. So right after Valentine's Day is when the course starts. But this weekend, she's been running an early bird special that will save you 25%. Okay. Um, you get your online classes. I think it's like a six-week session. It goes till May. That's more than eight weeks, isn't it? Or six weeks. February, March, yeah, that's that's like that's like a 10-week session. So um, it goes from February 17th to May 9th. You get to keep your videos forever. It's a video online workshop. Um, so even if you can't start right on um, February 17th, maybe your free time doesn't happen that week, but the next week, you can still save 25%. The videos are yours forever. There's a special Facebook group um, for live sessions, and all of the other quilting rock stars are in this special um, Facebook group so that you, if you have problems with your machine, your tension, you're not sure what's going on, you have um, hands-on experience and direct connection with those who can help you, and Holly Ann is at your disposal also. Besides, she's just a really fun gal to be with. So if you want to check out what the Free Motion Quilting Academy entails, you can hit up today's blog post, yesterday's blog post, or Thursday's. I think I, I wrote the most on it. Um, but check that out because 25% off is substantial. After today, registration stops and then doesn't resume again until February 1st. And those who um, register after February 1st will be paying regular price. So you can save yourself about 50 bucks if you wanted to register today. So you'll find all that information. Um, click to today's blog post and then um, hit up. Just the, the link is right there. It's too long for me to, to give you through here. But um, also if you're on Facebook, you can scroll through um, my feed. I posted uh, a post about the Free Motion Quilting Academy yesterday, and the link is directly in that post. So just come to my Facebook page, scroll down a few, few posts, and you'll find that link. Click the link, and it will take you to the About page and all, all that information. So don't miss out. You can Free Motion Quilt on your home domestic machine in the comfort of your own space, in your jammies, if you wish, um, and, and be very successful at it. You'll be in the company of others, also learning and um, enjoying their time together. For those who are listening who have participated in last fall's session, would you please feel free to leave a testimonial in the comments of this blog post? We'd love to um, encourage those folks re who really want to learn um, to free motion quilt who are just still sitting on the fence because they can't do it. They think they can't. They don't have a fancy sewing machine. They don't think that they can um, quilt their own projects. You can and you will and you will be successful. So please leave those testimonials and encourage some others. When can we do another quilt cam? I don't know. Maybe um, a, a couple of weeks before I leave um, for um, Phoenix. I'm going to be teaching in Phoenix at the end of the month. I'll be teaching on my birthday. So if you're signed up for those workshops, bring me cake. <laughs> um, I will also be um, giving a lecture at the start of my time. I'll be with um, 35th Avenue Sew and Vac. So if you check the 35th Avenue Sew and Vac website, um, you'll find all of that information. I would love to have you come. I'd love to see you. We're going to have a ton of fun. 
and then I'll be adding four days or so after that trip to stay in the Phoenix area and visit with family and that's so important so I'm, I'm glad I'm getting a chance to do that and by the time we get home guess what it's almost February January will be in the archives so um, that's about as far as I'm going for, for here um, Friday can't forget Friday your um, mystery clue number eight will be going live Friday morning people say what time what time what time and in my response is usually when I wake up and I get my coffee and I do my um, quote of the day and I tootle down to um, flip on the computer and see if there's any fine tuning that needs to happen any last minute typos and then I hit send so it's usually before eight o'clock in the morning okay and then we'll move further into frolic and see just where it leads us but I can tell you we're getting very very close let me check one more time with what's going on in Facebook land Facebook land says Jolene says, I didn't graduate with the fall class, but Holly Ann lets us have our videos and we can also follow with the spring class. So you can make it fit your life. If you've got young kids at home or you've got a part-time job or you've got elderly parents that you're taking care of or whatever it is that, that keeps you from keeping a regimented schedule, you can do this at your own pace. So thank you so much for that. Um, Elena says thank you for your time and for your work working on the mystery my students are working hard I'm from Chile you will get a picture of their work oh I can't wait to see just can't wait to see and um, Dottie says thanks so much for offering the mystery quilt and Holly Ann says hello so she is right there adding comments right now so um, Holly Ann if you want to give a plug <laughs> <laughs> and, and post my link you're welcome to post it right there in the comments because I'm too busy to post my link right now so grab my affiliate link and stick that in there um, she says I love your shirt yes you would also love the one that says yeah no those came from rural king so that's fun um, my dad sent a Amazon gift card for Christmas because he doesn't know what to get me and I commented just just the other day that I plan on spending that entire gift card on quilty t-shirts I think that's the best thing if I just put the gift card in my Amazon account it'll go for things like toilet paper and freezer paper and who knows what else so I'm going to spend it all on quilt wear that's so you'll see some new shirts this year anyway um, we are now over an hour and the hubby is pinging saying it's time to go to Lowe's I had to come grab a can of gray paint that was in the garage so that we can match it so that we can repaint the hand in. That's the next thing up on the end. So I'm gonna leave you here. If, if it's early where you are and if you have the ability to pick up something and put some stitches in, please do it. If you have um, the ability to attempt some binding or make a cushion cover, remember the magic formula for the cushion cover is finish size divided by half add three inches cut two rectangles that size and you won't you'll have enough overlap that you won't um, pop open in the center and then we'll look forward to seeing you um, tomorrow's blog post this will be embedded um, I'll be working on Friday's clue Mona's coming over my friend Jill's coming it's gonna be a busy week wherever you are stay quilty I'll catch you next time everybody see you later have a good day where's my button here it is bye